So now we know how to edit notes and their velocities manually using the pointer tools, as well as how to get them in time using quantize. Now it's time to learn how to totally transform them using the MIDI transform function. This is a very powerful and very flexible tool, so we're going to take a brief look at it here. So what is MIDI transform and why is it useful? Well, it lets you select a group of notes based on criteria that you specify and then change those notes in any way you like. If you ever find yourself going through and changing the length or velocities of many notes by hand, it might be time to think about doing a MIDI transform because it can automate this process. It works in two stages, selecting and operating. In the first stage, you might select all of the notes in your region which are higher than pitch C3, but also have a velocity lower than 100. In the second stage, you can do an operation on those notes. In other words, change them in some way. For example, you could make all of those notes the same length, or set them to random pitches, or change their velocities to be a crescendo. You get the idea. So let's do some transforms. The easiest way to get a feel for what MIDI transform can do is try out some of the preset transforms. You can find them under functions, transform. So let's try one out. How about fixed note length? This is the transform window. To apply the transform, we can use these three buttons at the bottom. Select only shows you which notes the current transform is going to affect, and it shows you that by selecting them in the piano roll. So this way you can check to see which notes are going to be transformed before you actually transform them. All of the preset transforms will affect all of the notes in your region by default, but we'll look at how you can be more selective in a moment. Operate only will perform the transform on the currently selected notes. If you want, you can select or deselect notes in the piano roll before you hit this. So I'm holding down shift now and deselecting some notes. When I hit operate, the operation will only occur on those notes which are selected. In fact, you don't have to use the filtering stage of MIDI transform at all if you don't want to. You could just select the notes you want to transform by hand and then choose operate only. But if you're working with a complex and long MIDI part, it's useful to be able to filter which notes you affect. Select and operate will both select the MIDI notes according to any filter you set up and transform them. So in this case, it's going to select all of the notes and perform the operation on them. Try out some of the other presets as well in the preset drop-down to check out what they can do. Many of the most common uses for MIDI transform are catered for here, so you might never need to stray outside the presets. However, it's always useful to know how to customize things the way you want them. So let's find out how to do that now. First, let's unhide all the parameters by unchecking this box in the bottom left. Logic's warning me that this is a protected preset and that if I, if I want to save any work I do here, I'll have to create a new user set. I can do that at any time by choosing Create Initialized User Set. And then I can rename it to anything I like. Unfortunately, user presets are saved on a per-project basis. You can't create sets that can be accessed from any project. However, you can import transform sets from previously saved projects by going to File, Project Settings, Import Project Settings. Then just choose a logic project which has the transform presets you like to use in it, and then choose transform sets and import. It's a bit of a clunky way of doing things, but it does work. So let's learn how to transform. This top layer is called select events by conditions. 
This is our filter which lets us select MIDI events based on various criteria. The first thing I'm going to do is specify that I only want to work with notes. And to do that I'm going to set status equals notes. You can transform other types of MIDI data too, but we're going to focus on transforming notes for now. Let's select some notes based on what pitch they're at. I can select only notes of a certain pitch with the equal sign. So for example, I could select notes at the pitch C in the third octave. And I'll select only and notice that all of my notes at C3 are now selected. I can also select all the notes which are not at C3 using the unequals option. Here I can select all the notes which are equal to or less than a given pitch. In other words, I could select C3 and any note that's lower in pitch than C3. You might remember from high school maths that this sideways V sign means less than or greater than depending on which way it faces. So with the point of the V facing left, it means less than, and with it facing right, it means greater than. You can also select all the notes inside a certain range, say C3 to C4, or all the notes outside that range. Finally, there's the map, which is a little difficult to understand. I'll explain that in a moment with regard to the operation stage, where it also appears. It's a little bit easier to explain in that context. So, you can specify multiple selection criteria at once. So, for example, I'm going to select any notes between C3 and C4, which have a velocity equal to or less than 100. So you can see that all the notes in that octave are selected except those with a velocity over 100, like these orange ones. Once I'm happy with my selection conditions, it's time to think about what operation I'm going to do on these notes. Now there are lots of different operations, too many really for me to go through them all, but some should be immediately obvious. Fix sets all the notes at a certain value. So I could set all of these notes to the same velocity. Or I could set them all to the same length. Or to the same pitch. Let me just undo those. Add will add a certain number to the existing value, so I could boost the velocity of all of these notes by, say, 10. Subtract will take away from that value. Min and max bring all the values within an upper or lower threshold, and I imagine you can figure out what multiply and divide will do. Random will give the notes a random value within a certain range. But plus minus random adds or subtracts a random number between zero and what you specify. This is really useful for making your MIDI notes seem less perfect. In fact, the Humanize preset uses this operation to slightly randomize the position, velocity and length of your MIDI, which helps make programmed MIDI notes seem, well, a little less programmed. There are lots more operations that you can do, but I just want to come back to the mysterious map. You will have noticed while I've been going through these operations that each one draws a strange little graph here in the transform window. 
Well, the map function lets you draw your own versions of these graphs. But how do they work? Well, if you had the time and inclination to count these little alternating white and grey stripes, you'd find that there are 128 of them, going from 0 to 127. As we know, 127 is the magic number of MIDI. So each very thin column represents a value from 0 to 127. And if I pull up a black bar in a column, I'm telling the transform window that each time it finds a note with a value of, in this case, 53, it should change that value to, say, 70. So the black bar represents the destination value. At the moment we're transforming velocity, so that means that any notes with a velocity of 53 will change to have a velocity of 70. But this doesn't just work for velocity. Pitch in MIDI is also expressed as a value between 0 and 127. For example, the pitch C3 corresponds to MIDI value 60. C sharp 3 is 61, while D3 is 62. So you get the idea. Drawing maps by hand is pretty slow going, and while it can be fun for velocities, I've rarely obtained too much of a musical result by editing pitch in this way. But understanding the map does help you to visualize the results of other operations. For example, if I quantize the velocity of these notes, you can see how, quite easily in a graphical way, how any velocities will be snapped to the nearest multiple that I specify, resulting in this kind of stepped graph. The transform window is really powerful, and ultimately it's only limited in its utility by your imagination. I know lots of people who never use it, and that's totally fine. It's not going to make you a better music maker. But if you do understand it, you'll find plenty of situations where it can save you a lot of time. And even though its interface looks so spartan, in fact it can be quite an inspiring tool if you use it to do creative experiments with your MIDI. So don't be afraid to give it a try.